morning, all. Join me in the call to worship. As we enter into this sacred place, let us put away the pressures of the world that ask us to perform, to take up masks, to put on brave fronts. As we enter this time, let us put behind us the messages that tell us that we are not worthy nor good enough to be in relationship with God and with one another. Silence the voices that demand us to be perfect, for this is a community of compassion and welcoming. Let us remember through our prayers and our intentions to center this time and every day in the foundation of our faith, surrounded by the divine. Thank you, gracious one, for reminding us that we are a holy people, sacred souls who are called to make a difference in the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Devin, for bringing us into worship this morning. And good morning, church. Good morning. Greetings to, greetings to all of our folks that have joined us in sanctuary this morning, and a hearty welcome to all of our friends watching us online as well. Please rise, embody your spirit, and join Lou here is joining me this morning in our songs of preparation. Light of the world, you step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see.
if you uh, happen to know the Spanish, sing along. Cinco de Mayo, right? <laughs> Let's celebrate. <laughs> Calores, de calores sin vista los campos de mi para vira. De calores, de calores son partes en cuenta de vida la fuera. De calores, de calores y raco y clifa los hilares. Con el cangre se mores de mucho colores me gustan, gustan a mí. Yo por esos los grandes se moras de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Sing of colors, sing of colors that over the hill in profusion are spring. Sing of colors. Of the birds that fly outside my window, their candles go singing. Sing of colors in the rainbow's bright colors, God's promise of hope where we go. Sing of colors that make up the earth and give thanks to to the God who created us all. Sing of colors that make up the earth and give thanks to the God who created us all. Sing rejoicing, every creature that breathes is a song of the God of creation. Sing rejoicing, sing to God who is earnestly cares who has offered salvation. Sing the good news, sing the love of the Savior, reflecting the colors of all. Many colors that shine from God's face, many colors that tell of God's love to recall. Many colors that shine from God's face, many colors that tell us of love to recall. Amen. <laughs> Let's give ourselves a hand on that one. Amen. Oh, precious creator, God of rainbows, God of all. We ask blessings upon this gathering wherever we might be, whether it's on site or online. May we know that we are all God's children. Welcome to this community of faith. So blessings upon this time, I ask in all the names that are holy and with Jesus, our beloved Christ, in whose name I pray and together Amen and amen, and please be seated and welcome. I'm really glad to see you all today. I'm glad that you made it here with us and that we're here in worship together. I'm the Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, Senior Pastor here, and on behalf of the fabulous staff and, um, and board and leadership, we're really glad that you're with us today. Uh, it's also happy May Day, happy Beltane, and happy Cinco de Mayo. Oh, and may the force be with you. Oh, fourth, be with you. I even, yes, I even wore my Yoda socks. You okay? All right. A, a little known fact about me, I love quirky socks. So, you know, it's, you know, cards and socks. That's all I care about. Anyway, I oh, want coffee mugs. Okay. So with that, as I said, I'm really glad you're with us, and especially if you're with us online. I'm going to invite you, especially if you're online, to please go ahead and check in and let us know that you are with us. Uh, also, please send in your prayers and your praises so that we can share those during communion time. And uh, for all of us, we have, whether online or on site, we have the opportunity to always uh, make a financial donation to the uh, life of this church. And we decided we've entered the 21st century, so there's all of these different ways you can give via the computer. There's Zelle, there's Breeze, you can go to the website and you can click on donate. So there's a bunch of different ways. And then of course there's a little brown box by Vanna is showing, Devin is showing over there, and of course the mail. So, you know, uh, however you'd like to, you can always donate. Now what does that go to? It goes to making a difference in people's lives. Amen? Because that's what we're all about. It's not just about keeping lights on, although that's great, but it's really about making and changing lives. Um, and one of the ways that you can help, you're like, oh, it's nice, I don't, know, I don't have it. That's okay, you don't have to have extra money. Because you know what? During worship today or right afterwards, we're going to be receiving a lot of food from the Bullet. 
um, for our food pantry. So if you've got a few minutes and you can help stock the food pantry, that is a way of supporting the life of this church. So there's lots of things you can do uh, and, uh, to, and, and to know that you can help out. Uh, we have, uh, uh, speaking of the 21st century, I want to thank Devin for, um, for really getting us in. We have, a, uh, if we could do the next slide, we have a connect with us. If you are new with us, you can whip out your phone, and if you can reach it, do a and then it'll come up, and you can fill out some information and give it to us so we can stay connected. Isn't that cool? I swear, I, I swear it works. If not, Vanna has, Devin has a yellow... Um, uh, yellow information cards I'll invite you to fill out. Where else can you see this? Well, we have this really cool TV monitor in the other room that we now have on it, um, our announcements, just in case you missed it. But more than that, we put it up because we've got lots of groups in here throughout the week. We've got a lot of 12-step groups. We have a lot of different um, organizations who meet. Uh, and so we have it up there of people. So if you are in social hall having coffee afterwards, see Connect, go you can test me, see if it works. <laughs> I get excited about simple things, y'all, so I'll just let you know. What are other ways you can help out? Well, we are going to have some get dirty days um, coming up. Yes, let's get dirty. Uh, garden cleanup this Saturday, May 11th, and the following Saturday. Uh, we have a beautiful garden. Uh, for those of you who are with us for the first time, uh, I'm going to invite you. You can go out later and you can see the garden. Uh, it's beautiful and it's a garden and gardens grow and gardens need help. <laughs> and so uh, we, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of work on it that hasn't been able to have been done. We've had uh, uh, consistent, fabulous, Ellen did it by herself for years. Uh, <laughs> And finally, she's like, i got to retire from this. And so uh, John Hilton and Des come at, during the week, and they work on it. But there's some deferred maintenance, deferred, 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 deferred maintenance on it, like trimming trees and things like that. So um, come and be prepared to get dirty from 9 to 2. I'll get pizza or something equally unhealthy for you to feed you <laughs> so that you will uh, be sure to join us. So we have that. Uh, we also like to have fun as well, and so coming up on the 18th, after you get dirty, go home and shower, um, we have a prom dance party that's going to be taking place. Uh, raise your hand, uh, Blue. Blue is an, an, a lyric. Raise your hand. They're organizing it. You're like, I, I, yeah, I don't have the ability to go out and get something fancy. It's okay. Just come have fun. Um, we have, if you, um, you know, want to send in your prom pictures from uh, when you, uh, if any of you did go to your prom, that unbearable, thinkable, thinking thing we did in high school. I have yours. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> yes, I do have, anyway, yeah. There are some prom pictures of me circulating out there. Thank you, Facebook. Um, <laughs> Ouch. Anyway, if you would like to send in, um, we're, we'll have fun with those in the evening so you can see Blue for more information on that. Um, we also uh, have, many of you have heard me talk about a chapel. We actually do have a chapel, and because we had a special guest, this is our chapel, by the way. Uh, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Yeah, it's right around the corner. If you go out those doors, there are restrooms there as well as over there. I feel like, I feel like a stewardess now. Uh, but it's a beautiful chapel. That right there, by the way, on the right-hand side is a columbarium. Um, this is another way that we have been a allowed to help serve the community. Uh, and, uh, you know, for those who may or may not know or remember, the beginning of AIDS, when AIDS hit, um, uh, mortuaries, funeral um, uh, cemeteries did not want to uh, deal with people who had died from AIDS. And we had a member at the time, you can take that down, um, we had a member at the time who was in the funeral industry and, um, and, and had that built. So there are some people who were longtime supporters of the church whose uh, remain, cremains are there. Uh, but it's not a creepy room, I promise. If you want to just, you know, go, it's open on Sundays after church. If you just want to go in Max, help to paint it. And um, it's just really nice. We're going to be putting up uh, ongoing pictures. I, 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 got the, I got the photo frame, digital photo frame. It'll be up next week so that anybody, and, and if you've lost somebody and you just want them remembered, 
you know, send their picture to me. And it's, it's good to honor our ancestors, those who've gone before yeah. us. So, amen. So our chapel is done. Um, you know, it's nice having company. We had a visit from our, the executive direct, excuse me, the um, moderator, which is the executive director, if you will, the head honcho of uh, Metropolitan Community Churches. She and her wife came here from England this last Monday and met with uh, the leadership of the church. And uh, so there's nothing like having big company coming to really finish all those projects that you... <laughs> Yeah, and for any Bill, check my office out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was not going to walk in and see what it's been for the last year. So, uh, amen. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of pictures, next Sunday is Mother's Day. If you would like, there's two ways of honoring our moms, uh, and moms mean anybody who was a mom to you or is a mom to you. Uh, you can either bring your pictures in and we'll have pictures here on the um, small altar, or, or if you don't have a picture, send it a JPEG and we'll um, honor them either by up here or through um, a PowerPoint. And then last, uh, the last um, a couple announcements before we move into our gratitudes um, is, I. So we have a board of directors that has six peop six openings. We had five. We've had five for a while. And um, I want to welcome uh, Lee, uh, Lee Fiss, um, who stepped up to fill in the position uh, a few weeks ago. So uh, you can see Lee if you have any questions or get, just get to know him. Uh, and then uh, and I just want to acknowledge those of you who are with us for the first time. Hi, Corey and Corey's friend. I assume you're friends. Okay, cool. Welcome. And Gina, is that you in the back? No. No. And who's in the back? Holly. Holly. Welcome, Holly. Sorry about that. You look like, you look like somebody who hadn't been here, and I'm like, what's that? There's bright lights in my eyes, so I can embarrass myself. Last announcement that I have is uh, Deacon Tom. Uh, raise your hand, uh, Tom. Deacon Tom is our prayer pastor for today. If you have a need for extra prayer, um, or just to talk, you can seek any of us out who have, are on the dais, but he'll be and he'll be in the chapel because it's beautiful. He wants to be in there, so we'll see him. Uh, so with that, we uh, have, we strongly, strongly believe, oh, one last thing, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, uh, we have Tuesday night study. This week, this is important, uh, there is an amazing presentation at 5.30 I'm going to invite you to sign up for it's with Neil Douglas Klotz um, on uh, the Aramaic Jesus. Uh, and so we're going to start the actual study time on our normal Zoom link at 645. But if you would like to sign up to view Neil's presentation, see me afterwards or uh, Deacon Tom. And then when we start at 645, which is 45 minutes later, we're going to have the opportunity to talk about it. So, okay. <sighs> Lots of good stuff, amen. <laughs> we also we also have um, we also have gratitudes. So one of the things that we believe in here is to start our time together saying thank you for the blessings. And so I'm going to share with you some of the blessings that were given to me today. We have a testimony from Reverend Megan. So um, I, we're not going to have testimonies uh, given from the uh, congregation, uh, but I do want to share these that were that were given to me. Uh, throughout the week. Uh, some of you may or may not know, but the United Methodist Conference. Yeah. United Methodist Conference, you know, for those of you who know what I'm about to say, they, it is now finally, yet I'll talk about more of this in my message, they, they, uh, they finally deleted the words practicing homosexuality, pra practicing, practicing homosexuals are, uh, what's the word? incompatible with Christianity. I'm like, what? They finally, after about 50 years, have finally voted by a margin of 85% to 15% to welcome into full communion LGBT folks, which is a huge, huge thing. Uh, Gail Elaine, one of our members uh, from Arizona, is excited that she will be visiting in May. Amen. Des is grateful for her health and for new friends here. God has been guided into, and she has been, God has guided her into uncharted territories. Don't you like the unknown? <laughs> 
It's a scary, but she knows God's with her. Thankful for the church to comfort her at these difficult times. Ed has extended gratitude, actually, for Des, who is one of the ones, as I mentioned, who is working on the garden. Uh, many uh, folks express their gratitude for be, being able to join Rabbi Heather Miller and her community keeping it sacred for an international intergenerational Passover, which was really, really beautiful. That was great. Um, many express their appreciation for our tech team, who is always behind the scenes, but always making things happen. Eric, our, one of our members in Rwanda, is grateful for the beauty in life, and he expects the rain that's causing a lot of mud and flooding damage uh, will end soon. I got a video call from him at 6 o'clock this morning. Boy, did I look pretty at 6 o'clock this morning. <laughs> But it was really sweet. He was visiting, for those of you who do not know, um, we have a member in Rwanda who joined us during COVID um, online. And we've been helping his nieces and nephews uh, go to school. And he was visiting with his nephew who's in uh, boarding school. At, uh, Samuel is a nephew. And it was so sweet because Samuel knows enough English that we were now being able to have a conversation, and it was really great. So that was a blessing. Pat Turner, one of our members in Nevada, is thankful her hand is healing fairly well, despite considerable pain, and she is grateful for prayers of healing. How many people are grateful for prayers of healing in their life? All right. Amen. Uh, Christy is grateful that her mom, Frances Martinez, who we've been praying for for a while, is in a good place now, and also Gilbert Jr. has plateaued um, on his likely journey to pass from this world to the next. Um, I thought that the luncheon with Reverend Cecilia and her wife, Regina, was magnificent, and Lane, mm -mm -mm. if anybody needs a chef, there you go. And a huge uh, gratitude to Christy for helping me put all those pictures up, and Jeff in uh -huh. the... That was a feat of love. Um, and so in-house, in does anybody have a, we're not going to go around JB, I'm just going to have people raise their hand today. Uh, how many people have gratitudes for a relationship in their life? Whether it's a friendship or a partner or parent relationship. And how many people are grateful for uh, their employment situation? And how many are grateful for or retirement? Yes. Um, how many are grateful for retirement? <laughs> yes. How many are grateful for new possibilities coming down the road? Mm. How many people are grateful for um, health that has improved? Amen. And we'll be praying later for health that needs to improve. <laughs> how many people are grateful for something that I didn't mention? <laughs> Amen. There you go. And with that, I'm going to invite, we started to do this about a month and a half ago, and asking people to share, how has God blessed you through the life of this church? And so with that, it's truly my honor to bring forward a colleague and friend, Reverend Megan Moore, as she shares with us how God has blessed her through the ministry of this church. I'll try to keep this short yes, in less than 30 minutes or so. Um, <laughs> um, for those who do, who do know me, I have, I'm a cynic when it comes to religion. Not spirituality, but religion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with my history background. But uh, 18 years ago, I walked through those doors during a service when Bob... Shore Goss was still here, and it profoundly changed my life in a way that I never could have imagined. Being a trans woman, um, finding a church home was always something that was difficult, because we were not welcome in so many churches, especially not as part of a church family or organizations. And I was, my spirituality was moving me towards wanting to serve more in capacity with the church. And after um, talking to Bob, 
I asked him what were the possibilities of becoming a deacon. And he looked at me and he says, um, no, I think I have something better in mind for you. And a year later, I was in seminary. <laughs> Damn his eyes. Uh, <laughs> four years later, I graduated with a 3.33 GPA and uh, a much more in-depth and profound understanding of Scripture and what it means. Uh, ten months after I graduated, I was ordained. And while I immediately became retired, so to speak, semi-retired because of my disabilities, I have continued to serve this church in any capacity that I can. And it has become family. I have several families. I have my D&D &D family, I have my family, and I have a church. And that became crystal clear to me last week in a manner that has left me very humble and touched by everyone here. I don't bring in a lot of money because of my disability and Social Security, which had been cut. And my upper bridge of ten teeth broke in two, and I am not able to get it fixed or replaced. I have to go alternative means to get teeth. This church came forward in profound ways that literally brought me to tears, and the process has now started to replace my teeth. And I could not have done it without the people here. I still have a long way to go. Um, I do have a lot more work that has to be done on my mouth. But I love all of you. And you are what makes this church truly Christian. It's not what we call ourselves. It's what we do. And you people have done that in how you show love, how you love others. And I cannot express how wonderful this congregation is. Bless all of you with my love. God is good, and all the time, amen. Before we move to our song of blessing, and thank you so much, Reverend Megan, for sharing that, uh, being uh, the testimony, I want to acknowledge our May birthday babies, um, even though we might be of varying ages. Uh, Linda Crane had her birthday on the 1st. Uh, our Reverend Dr. Jo uh, Joshua Goss uh, was also on the 2nd. Ariel Miramontes and Nancy shared your birthday yesterday. Uh, Deb Conway, one of our members in New Mexico, shares her birthday uh, tomorrow. Uh, Sherry uh, Mordeno um, uh, is coming up on the 8th, shares that with Kevin Kane. Our Reverend Dr. Bob Shorgoss, who Reverend Megan talked about, his is coming up on the 11th, and he shares that with John Hilton. Lane's coming up next Sunday. Oh. Yay! Oh. Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, good. He shares that with Kai. Uh, with Kai. On the 22nd, uh, James Blackwell, 23rd, Jennifer Pham. And our very own Apostle Lyric Mooney Jones is on May 24th. Amen. She's going to be bringing the message a few days later on Pentecost, so we are excited about that. And my beloved Marianne, uh, her birthday is on May 30th. So we got lots of uh, birthday babies in May, so a very happy birthday to all of you. And so with that, let's continue with our songs of blessing. So blessed I am. 
am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so loved. I am so loved. I am so grateful. reading today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 from the message translation and the new and the inclusive new testament listen to what the spirit has for you today so clean house make a clean sweep of malice and pretense envy and hurtful talk you've had a taste of god now like infants at the breast Drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you'll grow up mature and whole in God. Welcome to the living stone, the source of life. The worker took one look and threw it out. God set it in the place of honor. Present yourself as building stones for the construction of a sanctuary, vibrant with life, in which you'll serve as holy priests, offering Christ-approved lives up to God. The scriptures provide precedent. Look, I'm setting a stone in Zion, a cornerstone in the place of honor. Whoever trusts in this stone as a foundation will never have cause to regret it. To you who trust God knows they are a stone to be proud of. But to those who refuse to trust God, the stone the workers threw out is now the chief foundation stone. For the untrustings, it's a stone to trip over, a boulder blocking the way. They trip and fall because they refuse to listen and follow, just as predicted. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do divine work, and speak out for what is holy, to tell others of the, the night and day difference God made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. For you are the ch a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart, to sing the praises of the one who called you out of the darkness into the wonderful divine light. Once... You were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once there was no mercy for you, but now you have found mercy. This ends our reading. May God open up these words to our hearts and to our minds. Amen. Amen. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, 
my God, my Savior has rest me, and like a flood, God's mercy reigns on ending love, amazing grace. life endures. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, God's mercy reigns on ending love. Amazing grace, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine, but God who called me will be forever mine, will be forever mine, you are forever mine. You know, there's a few passages of scripture that really are ones that I hold near and dear to my heart, and I'm certain we all have those, don't we? Can you think of a couple that you have? What are some for you? John 3.16, for God so loved, so loved us, yes, gave his only son, their only son. Mm-hmm. Which one? Matthew 25, that's the crux of being the great commandment Christians that we are. That is to go and forth and to help those who are hungry and thirsty and to close those who are naked and visit those who are in prison, no matter what the prisons are, whether they're man-made or ones that we do to ourselves. Amen? What's another one? Micah 6.8. Micah 6.8. Yeah. And what does Micah 6.8 say? It says, what does the Lord require of you? Mm-hmm. But to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. With our God. Amen. I see another one? Yeah, Lane. Knock and the door shall be open. Knock and the door. That's man. Knock and the door shall be open. Sometimes it takes a while to get to the door, though, to answer it, doesn't it? Like, God, a little bit, little bit sooner now, please. <laughs> but yes, knock and the From door. Philippians, whatever is good and holy, think on these things. There we go. Amen. You know, a lot of us have been scared off by Scripture because a lot of people will take the Bible and thump it over your head. Amen? But you know what? There is really a lot of wisdom in Scripture. There really is. There's a lot of wisdom and there's things that help us to guide us, to to show us this is, this is, you know, this is what you do. This is how you follow. When you say, yes, God, yes, I, I want to serve you. I want to be a Christian. You know, sometimes that, sometimes that decision is made for us, right? For those, I was raised Catholic. I was baptized before I even knew what that meant, amen, right? You know, and, and, and then it was reiterated, of course, in my studies as a kid. For some of us, it's an altar call, right? I was not only baptized, I have gone for an altar call, right? But sometimes when we're moved, we're just moved by, by the Spirit in a room. We don't really know what is it I'm saying yes to. What is it I am saying yes to? 
You know, in the original Christian church, you know, it took a year of study, a year of study before you were accepted into, uh, we were baptized and accepted into the community. The reason why is because they really wanted to know that you knew what you were getting yourself into, right? And to see if it's something you could do. You know, while Christianity has been kind of been popularized as the it thing, there's a lot to it. It can change our lives. It can make the world a better place. It can truly bring healing if we do not use it as, a, as, as something to hammer over each other's head. Amen? Amen. Because that book, that Holy Scripture, is something that, you know, can be used to build walls or it can be something that can build bridges. And we here at MCC United Church of Christ believe that Scripture tells us that we are bridge builders. We are construction workers. Now, for those of you who do not know, my beloved, she, she was in construction for a while. And she's got the boots to prove it. Right? You know? And so I've learned a lot about construction in the last number of years, right? And, and a lot goes into construction. Some of us, can we can take something and we can just like look at something and we can see it in our mind's eye and zap, we build it. For others of us, it takes a lot of figuring out. Lot, so for some of us, you know, don't give us a hammer, maybe a screwdriver, because the hammer, <laughs> you know, we only have ten fingers, and <laughs> Right? <laughs> but you know, when we are followers of the way, when we are followers of the great commandment to love the love of the Lord, your God, with all your heart and mind and soul, and love yourself as you love your neighbor, paraphrase there a little bit, that's, that's, that's a big ask. But it's a great ask. Because it means that we must love ourselves and believe in ourselves. And the world does everything in its power to try to teach you you are not worthy. Amen? Yeah, the first part, the, the, the middle of the passage that we just heard talked a lot about construction and cornerstones. I just said, like, blank. Right? I don't know what part is builds what, but I do know what it's like to be a foundation. Amen? Amen? I know that it's really important in my life to have a firm foundation. How about y'all? Right? And some of us might not have it yet, and that's all good. It's coming. And for those of us who have a foundation, we can still keep building. And for those of us who say, that's nice, Pastor, but what part do I have to play in it? And I'm going to tell you everything. Everything. How many of you have played the game Jenga? <laughs> right? You'll pull those pieces out. Every piece is important. Because when we pull those pieces out, and if that's your piece that's pulled out, it could all fall down. We are all important. And what we have called upon our hearts makes us really important. Not all of us can do everything. I cannot cook for my life to depend on it. I have about six dishes that I can prepare. I can do spaghetti like nobody's business. I can do tacos. Okay, today's Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I can do a mean hamburger and a good salad. Oh, that's four. Well, I think a few more things are thrown in there. But boy, my goodness. Oh, I do cook salmon well. And, but, you know, looking and seeing what this man creates, and I know there's other chefs in here, I'm like, how'd you do that? Right? I watch all the cooking shows. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I think it's so. I want to be that when I grow up. <laughs> right? We all have our skill set. Yeah. Public, speaking. Public speaking, I think, is mine. <laughs> there <you go>. Being <laughs> compassionate, I believe, is mine. Amen. Being someone who can help bring people together and make you and help you believe in yourself, I believe, are skill sets. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right? And God, through Christ, has told us that you are important. Each person in here is valued. No one person is valued more than another. While I can and do clean toilets, I don't have a lot of time for that. So for those who have a calling to clean, praise God, I love you. 
Amen? And God knows I've cleaned my share. I am not above it. I say this because everybody's part is important in the community of Christ, and everybody's part is important to living out the great commandment. And so we come to this passage. You typically, the first sentence is not included in this passage, but I want to repeat it to you once more. It comes in different ways and different translations, but it says, So clean house! Make a clean sweep of malice and pretense, envy and hurtful talk. Ooh, snap. (laughs) Not me, Lord, not me. I don't do any of that. Right? I bet you you can think about maybe a time or two that if you didn't say it, you thought about it in the last two weeks. (laughs) Right? Don't go pointing at your lover over there. When we follow the way, it says, you know what? We don't have time for this. We don't have time for the backbiting. We do not have time to be saying all nasty types of things about yourself, let alone your neighbor. Because when we do, it all falls apart. I think of the world right now, and I think there are so many people who do not love themselves, because if they did, they would not treat themselves and others the way that they do. Amen? I can look at just about any of the problems in the world, little or big, and I think it all comes down to we, there's no love of the divine and no love for ourselves. Because when it says love your neighbor as yourself, that's why there's a problem, because when we don't love ourselves, we can't love our neighbor. <laughs> Amen? And then, of course, the whole construction piece, I kind of, as I said, I kind of glaze over. But you know when I wake up? is the last two paragraphs. These are two different translations, by the way. I just want to let you know. The last two paragraphs of this scripture, one is from the message translation, and one is from the inclusive New Testament. I want to pull our our attention to the last paragraph where it says, For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into the wonderful divine light. That we, we, all of us, are meant for a higher calling, a priestly calling. And that doesn't mean you've got to slap a tongue depressor on and stand up in front of other people. Amen? But it means you have to accept your sacredness. Accept your sacredness. For when we do, things change. I remember when I heard this, this uh, line in here that you are a chosen people, you are a priestly people, you are a holy people. It was the theme of one of Metropolitan Community Church's general conferences, which is, means it's an international conference, and we all got together in Australia back in the 90s, and this was the theme. And to see people from all over the world in all the languages believing that, was like, you could stand a little taller, right? You know, I'm of the age, as some of us are, some of you aren't, thank God you didn't have to go through it, but I'm of the age where, yes, I lived through, you know, all of the horrible stuff when AIDS first hit, right? right? Yeah, it wasn't, and then some of us here were, were around before that and know what it was like to be, you know, you could be arrested for going and dancing with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, arrested. Or just going out, right? People still do, so don't get me wrong. It still happens. But with to hear just this thousands of people just share over and over that we are a holy people called out by God was life-changing. And I have to admit, I take it for granted. For 40 years, I've been involved in MCC. I'm dating myself. I just came out of the cradle into MCC. Yes, I did. Careful, I know when you were born. Shush. (laughs) So when this happened this week, the United Methodist Church joined. What they did, as I said prior, they took out the words, uh, they took out the words that, that practicing homosexuals homosexuality is incompatible with Christian life. I'm like, what? First of all, practicing? 
What if I got it right? You're practicing, you'll get it right. I'll get it right sometime. But here's me. I was like, so? Right? I, I was like, oh, that's a little arrogant, Pat. Because I've been living my, all my adult life realizing that, you know what, who I am, who my friends are is okay with God, right? But do you know how monumental it was? It is huge that one of the mainline denominations, and I love this, I'm going to share this with you. The United Methodist Church joined MCC, because see, we knew this when we were formed in 1968. The Unitarian Universalists in 1970, the United Church of Christ, which is our, uh, one of our other denominations, knew it in 1972, Divine Science in 1986, the Evangelical Lutherans 1991, TFAM in 2000, Alliance of Baptists in 2004, Progressive Alliance of Christians 2008, TEC, I do not know what it stands for, in 2009, and the Presbyterians in 2011, and the Swedenborgen, yes, there is a denomination called the Swedenborgens, in 2023, and various independent Catholics finally decided what God already knew. Right? And why is this so important? Some of you might be with us later, either today or later on, and go, well, I'm not Christian. I don't care. Well, that's okay. It really is okay. But unfortunately, Christianity kind of has weaseled its way into a lot of the decisions and the mindset of the U.S. So when one of the major denominations has finally gotten it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. However, there are still those who don't know this. There are, and they might not be religious, and that's okay. It really is. But when we don't believe that we are sacred and that we are worthy, we can and do things that we may not be proud of not the least of which we hurt ourselves. Either through stinking thinking, right? Or through substance abuse or bad decision making, bad relationships, staying in toxic relationships, being the toxin in a relationship, loneliness, separateness, which then leads, leads to self-hatred. And then if you're not in that category, and I'm not just talking about LGBT folks, I mean, this runs the gamut. It doesn't matter who you love, right? Because we put this on people no matter, no matter what. We do this to people of different cultures, of different genders, right? Of different socioeconomic classes. What happens? We do not love ourselves. And then... We decide to do what the first sentence of the scripture says and start backbiting and start beating others up and start telling them all sorts of things and bully. Anybody here ever been bullied? Yeah. It's not fun, is it? Not at all. I, 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 <laughs> I self-censored what I was going to say about bullying. <laughs> it's not pretty. And it turns into a lot of the hatred that we see going on in the world. Bigotry, better than, self-aggrandizement, power over instead of power with. And as I said, it leads to self-hatred, self-destruction. I want to share with you something that was brought to my attention this week. Blue, you saw him up there singing today. He shared with me Tuesday. He said, Pastor, he goes, I found this when he was on one of his hikes. And it was a letter. It was a long letter. But I, I'm just sharing with you the beginning of it. He found it. He said he was walking and he saw this. And I, he took a picture of the note. It's real. And, and, and it was folded and folded and folded. And it was on the ground. And he's like, oh, what's this? He picked it up. And he read it. And he shared it. And he said, and it said, my name is Tony and I attend a local high school. 
Whoever finds me, please tell the people I care about that killing myself was the last thing I wanted to do. But I felt like I was letting everyone down and myself. I'm at peace with my decision and I just, and just know that my final moments weren't in pain. I'm sorry to those I caused problems to. And then he continues to name people who were important to him. It also had a phone number on it. It said, please call this number. And Blue did. And it was to his high school counselor. And the counselor took a breath and said, I cannot tell you how much this is going to mean to his family. And I share this story with you because the words I say are true. That's the ultimate. But this song, Another Angel on Assignment, Ed said, Pastor, I think we need to sing this song today. This is before he knew any of this. And I, I want you to listen to the words. And as we sing this, I want you to sing this to yourself. And I want you to sing this to Tony. How could anyone tell you you are anything less than beautiful? Some of us have been told that too much and too long. But I'm going to tell you the scripture that we heard is real. I believe it in all of every fiber of my being. And when I doubt it, I doubt it. When I doubt the words that other people say or I say about myself. All we have to do is go back to Scripture and find it. And if you say, Pastor, I don't have a Bible, that's all right. Because everybody sitting here, every one of you, is a verse from sacred Scripture. So in this world going out into this week, please, friends, please, know that you are a holy people, a sacred people. Doesn't matter what happened in the past, because we have today, and we have God. Amen? Amen. No better than anybody else, but we have at the center of our hearts and minds and souls the presence of all 
that is holy. Amen? Amen. 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 Anybody else in here feel? Why don't you just take a minute if you feel what God is doing in here right now? Just raise your hand and give Him thanks. Amen. It's okay to do that. Sometimes we got to get a little bit off of the script, but I know I just feel the move of God in here right now. And if you receive right now, even before we take this communion, I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Just let God fill you even the more right now. Hallelujah. Oh, God. My God. Ooh, thank you, Heavenly yes. Father. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm. <sighs> this day, 
when we celebrate all of God's creation, we are reminded that we are all connected. My God. As such, we come to this table at which we remember the many times Jesus shared divine teachings with the bread of life and the cup of wisdom. Yes, God. One of these lessons is that we can lift each other up. Yes, yes. As we deal with the struggles of life. We now do just that yes. as we share our prayers and concerns, after which we will respond with, God, hear our prayers. So thank you, gracious God, for this beloved community that literally spans the world. Hear us, O oh God. God, hear our prayers. We pray for all of those in the Middle East who are exhausted from all of the violence and trauma. We especially pray for the many 11,000 gods and children who are now orphans. For the tens of thousands more who have been killed or missing. May all be fed physically as well as spiritually. Hallelujah. May peace prevail and be manifest in the hearts of all. And may a ceasefire in the name of Jesus begin now. Prince of Peace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hallelujah. We also continue to pray for mm. Ukraine that continues its fight for liberation and sovereignty. Hear us, O oh God. God. God, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Keith and Ken are in Palm Springs today dealing with some real estate issues. They pray that the decisions they're making are the right and blessed ones and that they'll find the right buyer for their place. They also ask for peace for this long and nerve-wracking experience. God of hope and help, hear our prayers. We continue to pray for the leaders of this country and our denominations, especially the MCC's moderator, Reverend Elder Cecilia El 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 Elgiston. Whew. May they continue to remember they are real people affected by their decisions. Hear us, O oh God. God, hear our prayers. Gail Elaine offers prayers for the well-being yes, for Jane Wilt, mm -hmm. T.R., Carolyn Quinn, Don Lewis, her husband Jeff, yes, and for herself. Yes, God. God of health, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Yes, God. We ask prayers for forgiveness for our ignorance and insecurities which have blinded us to your presence in the world, in yes, our God. world, deafened us to your sacred space, prompted us in arrogance to demand and dominate, numbed us to the destruction we've caused, held us hostage to either or thinking and living. Thus we ask that we learn to walk gently upon this earth and yes, with God. one another in right relationship, yes, nurtured by your love, taking only what we need, yes. giving back to the earth in gratitude, honoring all with reverence, yes. reconciling and healing, yes. mindful of those who will come after, recognizing our proper place as part of, not apart from, your blessed creation. God of forgiveness and healing, hear our, our prayers. For all who are protesting the injustice of the world, especially on the college campuses. May it be done without violence of word or deed in the name of Jesus, God of justice, hear our prayers. Yes, God. Ariel has a prayer request for his other grandmother, Mimi, who's currently in her last moments. Yes, God. He and his husband are currently traveling at this moment so they can say their last goodbyes. Mm. God of compassion, hear our prayers. For all those affected by climate change, especially in Rwanda, where they're dealing with flooding and erosion, God of all creation, hear our prayers. Prayers for Phil, who learned that, one, that an old friend died suddenly from a heart attack. God of compassion, Hear our prayers. Jesse asks prayers for her mental and physical health yes, and for her family and friends. 
Also, she says she is grateful for the blessings and miracles God has provided to her. Yes. Yesterday, she was able to bring a smile to someone struggling with depression. Yes. God is good. Yes, all and the time. Spreads joy and smiles. Yes. She's grateful that some of those are through her. Amen. God of compassion, hear our Amen. prayers. Our prayers. For all the women who have lost the ability to make decisions over their lives, and may they regain control of their bodies and their decisions soon. God of justice, hear our prayers. For those who have lost loved ones this week, especially Ariel, who lost his grandmother, and Gina, who lost her brother, God of gentleness, hear our prayers. Another online Todd is grateful for his health conditions being stable and his knee replacement is healing well. Great physician here. Our prayers. Continued prayers from JB and Edwin for their friend Carleen and her husband in New York who are dealing with aging issues. They also ask prayers for their friends in Orange County, Wayne Lawrence and Lee Derler. They had to put Lee in an assisted living center because he can no longer walk on his own. God of healing, hear our prayers. Healing prayers for all those struggling with health issues, especially Eric, Morga's niece. Gail Elaine asked for prayers for healing for friends, Elisa, Amina, Blue Sky, and Chandra. For Penny's back, for Pat Turner, that, tw uh, that her wrist continues to heal. For Jean, who is recovering from hip replacement surgery. For Tom's cousin, Linda. For Michelle's brother. And for Christy's sister, who is still recovering from a head injury. Great physician, hear our prayers. Des asks prayers for a positive resolution to a situation that she is struggling with. Yes, God. And also from online, Jesse, once again, says... One last gratitude. She's grateful for Reverend Pat's sermon today. Yes. As yes. she is struggling with depression. Yes. And finding value in the world. She needed to hear that. Yes. She thanks Reverend Pat for her message today's yes. service. God, hear her gratitude. Yes, God. Continued prayers for all dealing with cancer, especially Penny and Nancy's friends, Laurie Sofer and Kim Pounder as well as for their friend Dottie, who has been diagnosed with blood cancer. For Susie, for Pat Biley, for my cousin Barbara's husband, jo Johnny Renner, who had hernia surgery while also dealing with cancer, a friend of Phil's who was dealing with throat cancer, King Charles and Princess Kate, for Lane's niece's husband, Christian Allen, whose cancer has returned, and for his procedure tomorrow. God of healing, hear our prayers. our prayers. Prayers for all those dealing with mental illness issues, especially anxiety and depression, and for those who are in such pain that they harm themselves and end their lives. Wonderful counselor, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. One more from Jesse. She says, lastly, may the Lord grant her knowledge and the use of her hurt hands yes. to complete a small art commission and finish the artwork. God of creativity, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for all those who are on a journey of recovery. Yes, may they know they are not alone in the steps ahead. Great counselor and healer, hear our, our prayers. prayers. At this time, I would invite you to say the names of others you would like to lift up in prayer today. Now, now let us join our hearts and voices together as we go to God in prayer as we sing. Where I go and 
shared our prayers and strengthened our connection with one another, we prepare our hearts for this meal. Yes. Take a few moments of silence to reflect on anything that may hinder you from being fully present. Take a breath and take several breaths in the moment of silence and allow yourself to be with the Holy One. grateful divine one for continuing to open our hearts and minds so that we might find ways to live more fully in your presence living our lives as you have called us to live them thank you also for reminding us that we are a forgiven people and a forgiving people amen and now let us join all the saints with all the saints who've gone before us especially ariel's grandmother and gina gina lozano's brother carlos as we sing our song of praise. Santo, 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 me corazón te adora, me corazón te sharing of the bread and the cup especially his last when his arrest seemed near Jesus ate a meal in the upper room with the disciples as he had done so many times before he took the bread and after having given thanks to God we thank you God he broke it and gave it to the disciples. This time saying, do ye this and remember me. Hallelujah. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup. He shared this another cup from the table. He gave thanks and said, I will not drink from this cup again until I drink it with you in the kingdom of God. Yes. After his resurrection, Jesus shared this meal again with his disciples, and he taught them and us that his execution was not the end, That's it. and his ministry continues to this day. The dominion has persisted and persists today through the many women and men who seek to be resurrected community. Despite the divisions, the violence, and injustice in this world, 
God continually brings forth renewed hope for love, justice, and mutually to and through each of us. So now, let us bless this meal. Mm, hallelujah. May things be blessed. May they all represent the extraordinary and the extraordinary. As Jesus calls us to follow him, we give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at this table. Strengthen our faith. Increase our love for one another as we have been fed by the seed that became grain and became bread. May we act out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. Amen. Amen. Yes, God. And we now invite you to take part in communion. All of us, this is an open co communion. Yes, All God. around the world, wherever you are, yes, take, take something, take it in. And with the items you have gathered together or taken from the table when you came in, feel free to say a prayer with whomever you are with or simply between you and your creator. This is the cup of the bread of life and the cup of salvation. As we have received this meal, in our hearts, minds, and souls have been fed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go forth and feed the world. Let us now rise for our closing song. today. I'm glad that I was here today. I'm glad that, you know what, that we can remind ourselves that we are a holy people and we got some work to do. Amen. So may we go forth from here and may we truly allow ourselves to be filled to overflowing and to do the best we can with what we got. And with that, we will change the world with love and compassion and healing. Go in peace, go with Christ in whose name I pray and together. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.